be seated and take your Bibles and open them uh, to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Next, we will read Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 14, verses 7 through 11. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 7 through 11. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place. And thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Lord, we just pray that you would be lifted up in this time. We pray that that would be the case in all of us who hear this message today and in the one speaking the message, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would increase in this place in a powerful and mighty way and that you would speak to each one of us by the Holy Spirit and your Holy Word. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Humility, humbled, humbled to the cross. Both the key to humility and the prime example of humility is Jesus. And we do well to keep our eyes focused on him. I'm hanging a bag on the pulpit today and I have some humility illustrations uh, in that bag and so I'd like you to think about humility in fact we'd like to give an award today for the most humble person would anyone like to volunteer yes I'd just like to see that hand of someone very humble uh, to volunteer now if you would volunteer yourself that's you know you're on to me already okay uh, you would immediately disqualify yourself if your hand went up like this uh, what if I tried this uh, could you please suggest the most humble person in the room? Who, who would you say is the most humble? 
And so one might say, well, I think Gail. Well, I think Barbara. I think Inga, it's gotta be. I'm just picking on our three dear seniors. I think Myrtle has to be the most humble uh, of them all. And, it is, and we got a head shaking. That's the first one where a head shook. Okay. Thank you, Ruthie. Now, now that just went right over to Myrtle's head. Okay, now she disqualified herself. Okay, so if we volunteered ourselves, we would be disqualified. If uh, we got volunteered by somebody else very quickly, it could disqualify us. H humble. Uh, on the opposite end, uh, we can be very proud of things, can't we? Uh, easily, quickly, we little ants, as we describe, uh, uh, can be very proud of our anthood, uh, even before other ants and, and even before God, uh, sadly, in flying in the face of God. We can be proud of our accomplishments. We can be proud of our mass of accumulation of property or of wealth, of, of finance. Uh, maybe we can be proud of our intellect and how smart and how sharp we are, proud of our uh, positions that we have attained and our degrees that we have amassed. Uh, we could be proud of our family. I thought, you know, I've often mentioned, uh, try having five daughters someday. Someone actually took me up on that and, and went up, up, up me, <laughs> where I thought I might be proud of the award of five daughters. I have found out that I have lost the award and have to yield the, uh, the daughter award to the six seated. Uh, and, and so we might be proud of our ethnicity, proud of our race is a, is a, is a big thing uh, today and some, uh, all the confusion of that and you're told you're proud even if you're not proud uh, is, is quite a interesting slap uh, in the face to this subject of race and perhaps it's the most proud saying you're proud uh, that are the proud, who knows uh, with this thing called pride because it's kind of a, a slippery and hard thing. So of our own importance or our, of our own abilities, of our successes, of our accomplishments, of our trophies, of our banners, of our plaques on the wall, uh, of our mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. And oh, that's my favorite and first illustration. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? And somehow that mirror comes, you know, uh, to the me, my, and I of this. We might be proud of something on the wall. And I, I put a lot of things on the wall at my little humble apartment uh, uh, for Dorinda's return. And she is back in somewhere getting Graceland right now. And, and you have happy pastor again. Uh, but on my wall, I sat her down with her eyes closed and put her down in one chair there where uh, she could just see the lights come on and the smart lights even turn colors and, and the music come on. It was, just, it was just an amazing moment there. But behind her, she did not know there was a towel on a rack. And that is the, the, the uh, disdained uh, deer antler rack that I put on. And I remember that, that deer that I got, you know, and, and I was so excited to get that with a bow. Uh, and, and then uh, when I brought it home, I said to Dorinda, I said, I'm thinking about doing a head mount of this rack, of this trophy rack of seven points up and two points down. And she said, where are you going to put that? I said, above the fireplace. And the words, not in my living room, uh, came ringing out of Dorinda's voice. And I had, I had a moment there to think about that. And I thought, I am the head of this home. She, she is the neck. And the neck of that deer, you know, may not be the neck that I want to cut off. And so, oh, look at that. Here she is. After all that. So, so, so I, 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 I made a decision that the nine-pointer is not the deer to die on. Okay? You know? And, and, and so I cut that, those horns off and did a little plaque mount. And every now and then in the old house, this rack would slip down from the bedroom or the closet you know, where it was there, or it fell off the wall up in there, you know, on the note, and it would come down to downstairs, and it would just, I would just time how long, how many uh, days till she saw, how many, how many hours, how, how many minutes, uh, how many seconds did it take for her to realize that's in, you know, and so then every year that I shot since then, has been this moment before I let that arrow fly, and if this offends you, please, uh, 
uh, don't be too offended, but I, I always think, you know, oh, that's a Dorinda rack. What is a Dorinda rack? A Dorinda rack is one you would never think about mounting. This deer this past season uh, up on the mountain had a, it was an eight point buck. Doesn't that sound exciting? But it was the smallest, tiniest eight point buck you'd ever want. It was almost embarrassing to have it to have eight points. And I cut that rack, I didn't even, I don't even, I, I think, I don't even know what, what I did with that one. Okay, so every rack that's it. But there will be a rack that I won't ask if we're doing a head mount. I, I, it's it's going to be the Christmas tree rack, and it's going to have more than seven. Uh, it, it might not happen in my lifetime. It might, it might be in heaven in my mansion. You can come over and check that yeah, there's a rack. Uh, but, you know, we could get proud about a lot of things, can't we? We could be proud, proud about that. We could get proud about, I'm so proud of my computer. And there's someone here saying, wait a minute. I gave you that computer. You can't be proud of it. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, I'm proud of what I can do on that computer. Really? Really, I'm proud of those likes. I'm proud of I'm proud of that uh, the followers, okay, and the number of the followers. And I'm just trying to speak to all the uh, places and faces, and the abilities, and the gaming skills, and the and the importance, the successes, the accomplishments. The I'm proud of that beard. I'm proud of that non-beard. I'm I'm proud of that hair. I'm proud of that baldness, okay? That shine. I, you know, you can be proud over all kinds of things. Little to do with anything that we could or should be uh, proud over. Uh, so from the muscle mass to the uh, uh, accomplishments and things like that, uh, pride can creep in at any, any, any way, at any time, at any place. We could be proud of a sweater. This sweater I wore with a little hesitation last week. Maybe some of you saw it. I wonder if any did. It's an exciting sweater for me. It has the initials monogrammed on this sweater. GB. 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 Could be very proud. Wow. Pastor had his own initials monogrammed on that sweater. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Whoa, oh, excuse me. Uh, we can have pride come crashing down quickly when we read that it's not GB, it's Godfrey Bean that is <laughs> on the monogram, okay? Uh, there goes that. Whoa! There goes that really proud sweater. Uh, this mirror I bought this week, and it, you know you could be really proud at a distance, and then you could flip the mirror. And I don't know if any of you have ever looked at a 10x mirror. I I, I saw this. I said I had to get it. I don't know if it would be ladder sad, but I got it. In a 10x mirror, I can't see anything here. But when I go down to here, it is like. <laughs> I need to go do something quick. 10X, magnified. And I wonder if you could just uh, let there be a 10X magnification, a 10X magnification of our own heart today before the Word of God. Our own heart before the Spirit of God on this subject of humility. I wonder if you could allow and invite God to just say, uh, okay, just show me my what I think is a humble heart. Uh, show me me. Show me that it might not be a humble heart under this big subject. And as we tiptoe into it, I would like to take the next couple weeks and then skip a week, uh, likely being gone. And, and Brother Zinni will be uh, sharing the sermon there on Palm Sunday and then be back, Lord willing, for uh, the, the Resurrection Sunday. But just this humble to the cross. Uh, type of theme in this next uh, few services. Humble. Humble to pray. Humble to bend and bow. Humble to trust. Humble to read the word of God and submit ourselves before. Humble to be that ant that says highest praises, honor, and glory be unto your name. Humble. Humble to serve and to serve the least of these, my brethren. Uh, and to take that lowly stoop of 
maybe be the one who has the dirty diaper uh, changing opportunity uh, for the glory of God. Uh, the toilet downstairs needs plunging and you rush to be the one to volunteer to plunge the toilet and by the way it over flooded and the whole basement's flooded. Uh, uh, to be that one who would humbly serve uh, and, and I'm looking at some people who have done that even in this very basement uh, the, the humble to, to, to be put uh, down and be willingly humble to receive good or bad at the hand of the Lord uh, uh, shall, we, shall we argue shall we be humble to suffer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ humble, humble. and then we think of this one uh, who is the humble one, the humble one, humble to the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, found as in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. I think of just a glimpse of that scene where he cries out with his hands willingly stretched out, humbly stretched out, needlessly except for our great need, stretched out. And he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He who could have called 10,000 angels and destroyed the world and set him free, he humbles himself to become obedient unto death. So this is the Lord Jesus Christ. We do well to uh, put a, an exaltation where God hates a proud look even. Uh, uh, these things does the Lord hate. It, it seven is an abomination to him. And a proud look is mentioned. Even the proud look of our heart. So where should our heart look? Our heart should look unto Jesus. What is the message? Well, the Bible says, for whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, but he that humbles himself shall be exalted. So our message today is simply this word, humble, humble, humble thyself, and I have an or else, humble, humble thyself, humble thyself. In the scriptures that were read, and they are only the chip of the iceberg, of the many scriptures that could be read and could bless us in and on this subject, we see some things unfold. Who is speaking? Well, it's Jesus. What is he doing in the gospel passage in Luke? He's, he's telling us a story. It's a story about a chair. And that chair is very close uh, to the host, the guest, or the prominent, the important. That host, if you will, at the wedding reception is uh, the honored seats of the, the bridegroom or the groom's men or the bride. Uh, I always think of the best men and the best women. <laughs> know what they're all called, yes. The groom's ladies, no, the bridesmaids. The bridesmaids, yes, those. On that side, uh, it's that table that was next to it of the reserve for the, you know, it's the immediate family. And then there's always one that isn't immediate, but you know uh, that that they are the honored guest. And so uh, in the reception that you've waited for, waited for, waited for, waited for, and the adorbs ran out, but the pictures went long, and, 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 and they were invited into that guest room, and there weren't any name tags, but you were just finding a seat. What seat would you find? It's the chair test. Now, in a Baptist church, it's the back row. <laughs> it's the back row. Uh, I don't know why I'm picking on the back row today. Someone said, where should we sit? I said, well, try the back row. It may be the only uh, row that would fit your family, okay? But I would, I would love the new design of the auditorium to have a little conveyor belt, okay? And a little conveyor belt that would just dip down the first row and then the first row would pop up in the back row and the back row would advance one row. And then I could just push it again 
push it again, push it again, and suddenly the honored guests we brought it at the front, okay? Bro, the best seats. What what are the best well that you know gotta be the front seats. That's the that's the spout where the goods come out. Uh, that's the spitting section, okay? That's the, the, the front row seats. You know, when you go, amen, amen. That was a great point, Pastor. Would you put your mask on again, please? Uh, there has got to be the honored seats. At the wedding, it would be that seat closest to the honored guest. And Jesus tells this story about this, this, this choice of seats that one would take. And this rush to the front, maybe it's not the seating that you want, but it's the it's the numbers called of the tables. There were name tags on the tables, but there were numbers on the tables. And you know that that number calling was for the buffet line. And you were hoping to hit the lottery that day on the buffet line numbering choice. And, and lucky number seven was called. No, we don't believe in luck. Uh, providentially blessed. Number seven was called. And, and they, they drew them out of a hat. Or it was that... It was that uh, host uh, or hostess of the reception that would look out and just kind of pick a table so you look really important and you look really hungry and you hope very much that your table would not be picked last of the 47 tables that would be picked one by one and your picking would be the little bit of picking of what might be left at the buffet table um, where are you at where did you sit today what are you hoping for when it comes to this area of pride and humility? How first do you want to be? God really changes the equation on this, doesn't he? God incarnate did. Let, let's just say this, first of all, that Jesus, he owns the turf. What turf? Well, we're going to call it the humility turf. Uh, Jesus owns the humility turf. He owns it. He owns it. Um, we could just look at two things, and this week we will, at two things of his uh, early earthly beginning uh, journey. For unto you a child is born. Unto you a son is given. Let's forget the government shall be upon his shoulders part. Uh, let's look at this humble birth where uh, in Luke chapter 2, it talks about a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. You talk about humble. Uh, you could talk about where that swaddling clothes came from and where that manger was and that smell of the manger room there with no room in the end for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You talk about a humble birth. We could talk about his donkey ride on the way into Mama Tummy, okay? And that was a humbling experience right there. Uh, what are you doing? She deserves a jet. Uh, she deserves the best of treatment to go. Uh, I think of the flight to Egypt. Was it a 747? Was it the, you know, uh, the uh, most uh, fastest and the best uh, of the flight? No, it, it is again that donkey ride, then postpartum of that flight to Egypt. Someone drew that in junior church and they drew a plane and they drew Mary Joseph and, you know, riding on the plane. And then what, what's that? Well, that was, that was their flight to Egypt. You know, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. A humble birth. And Jesus describes and epitomizes. I like uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 16, where the shepherds came with haste. They found, and I, I always wondered about the reading of this, they found Mary, Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. I thought, that's a pretty big manger. <laughs> that's probably just the babe lying in the manger. But, but it's a humble birth, a humble birth. So uh, the beginning of his earthly ministry, his earthly journey. Uh, and then the beginning of his, secondly, of his earthly ministry, uh, we would look to the baptism there. And, and it's, it's, it's John that says, I would like to be baptized of you with this dichotomy, this paradoxy going on of, of humility. John, John the Baptist, who's, who's he? Well, uh, what did you come out to see, uh, said Jesus, uh, in Matthew chapter 11, a prophet, yea, more than a prophet, uh, this, this messenger sent before my face that prepares the way before me. But then in verse 11 of Matthew 11, he says, Truly, verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, 
notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This paradox of greatness, this paradox of, of humility, of John, they asked him, who are you? Are you a prophet? Are you Elijah? Elias, I am not. Art thou uh, the prophet? John chapter 1, uh, verse 21. Uh, who are you? Give me an answer to those that sent us, uh, these Pharisees. And, and they came, a voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Uh, but they baptized uh, and why do you baptize if you're not the Christ uh, or Elias or a prophet? I baptize you with water, John says, but there standeth one among you whom ye knew not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. Talk about humility talk about exaltation of the right one and John the Baptist the greatest born among women yet the least in the kingdom is talking about this one that we want to put our focus on today the focus upon the Lord Jesus Christ and he says I'm not worthy to untouch his shoe to unlatch it to untie the Shoelace. I got a knot in my shoe. Could somebody help me, says the little girl. And rushing would be all to help out, except John the Baptist in reference to the very shoe of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not worthy to stoop that low or any higher than that compared to the Lord Jesus Christ. So there was a question of the disciples, of John's disciples and Jesus in John chapter 3. And, and, and John says, look at it in John chapter 3, verse 27. He answers, a man can receive nothing except it be given from heaven. Wow, there's an answer to our sermon today. You don't have a brain cell that hasn't been given by heaven above. You don't have an ability. You don't have an ability to rub those two brain cells together. Uh, you don't have an ability to get and to gain and to amass and to have uh, outside of the grace of God. You can't even put in your mouth to say a word that would make sense to any ear outside of the grace of God. What do you have that you haven't been given? And if you have it, if you have been given everything, why do we glory in it as if somehow we attained it? Somehow we deserve somehow we got it. Somehow we can be proud of our looks. Huh, really? Of our of our clothing. Oh really? Uh, of our of our possessions, our positions, of our intellect. Oh really? No. All is a gift of God. And we must humbly admit that and put our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and John explains that very well in John chapter 3 and verse 30. If you want the key uh, to it all, that's the end of the sermon. We'll get there soon, but uh, very quickly. He must increase, I must decrease. That is his words. So Jesus, Jesus holds the humble turf. <laughs> He held the high ground eternally and he takes the lowest ground in a manger and he takes the lowest ground in being baptized by John the Baptist who said, I should be uh, baptized by you. But no, he, he, uh, Jesus submits to baptism from John. Wow. I mean, that's a humble position right there. I mean, baptism, if you follow the Lord and believers baptism, it is humbling. I remember baptizing many of you in this room I remember and as strong as Steve might be who's shaking his head as he remembers I remember telling him uh, take one hand and hold this hand and you can put your mouth on this hand and it gives me a nice place to grab on and if you haven't been believed baptized as a believer it is a very humbling experience 
and all the power and all the strength that you have is like taken away when you are baptized by someone else because it does not say I baptize myself. That's reflexive, okay? It does not say, uh, you know, that, that, that I, I did this. It's a passive type of thing. I allowed somebody to baptize me. And I just say, just, just bend your knees. And then you're going down. When I say bury in the likeness of his death, that's the key to you getting all wet and underneath and backwards like a picture of burial. And look out, that is a very vulnerable position when someone else is telling you just to relax and bend your knees. And then I will put you down under that water. And just like the picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, that three days later, I'm going to bring you up. <laughs> you say, wait a minute. No, no. Three milliseconds later. Because we're just doing the picture, not the real thing, okay? And, and so it's dead, buried, and what a vulnerable position. And then with the help of the buoyancy of the water, more than the muscle of the pastor, it is raised in newness of life. Uh, three milliseconds, not three days later. And, and it's a humbling position and experience. Jesus Jesus was baptized. Jesus was humbled then to the cross as it is even pictured then by John the Baptist. So Jesus, Jesus owns the turf. He owns the turf. Uh, Jesus offers the humility talk. What's that? Well, that's our story today. And he gives a story about the wedding. And, he, and, and somebody comes in and says, that's the chair I want. I want the best seat. It was the back row in the back. No, it was the front row. No, it was the near the in the wedding. It was the first one that would be called to the buffet line. It was the honored seat, except that person did not belong there. And Jesus uh, gives this this you know story about the race to first place, and it's the race of the me, it's the race of the my, it's the race of the I, and in the cheap place, cheap place, the place of honor. The place where we would elbow others out to get to. It's the place where we would be seen. It's the place where we would be noticed. It's the place of importance. And, and so this, this place and this race to first place was something that uh, would be a naturally uh, desired thing by the inflation of the head and the pride of the heart. Uh, to those who were invited to this dinner, but instead of just being thankful you were invited, you wanted to be in the first place and be in that spot of honor, in that spot of notoriety, in that spot of being noticed. And, and, and so you move up higher, but look out, for in that race uh, to the place, Jesus, Jesus is giving this humility talk and so we share it today and and we talk about the disgrace of, of of last place jesus is like that isn't he he says the first shall be last and the last shall be first everything with jesus is kind of reversed okay it's just kind of the opposite and so it is at this table and 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 there is a a, a seating a rearrangement of the seating where that one that should not have was uh, and, and rushed to the best speed seat in the best place uh, was then relocated by this host to the last place. And so you can almost see, you know, he was there early and he got the best seat, but he wasn't supposed to take that seat. And now it filled up and there wasn't only maybe one seat left in the last place. <laughs> and so uh, the last place is there. What's he talking about? What's he picturing? Well, he's picturing the, maybe the, People who thought because of their social status, maybe they thought because, and specifically of the Pharisees of that day and the religion of that day, uh, because of their religious status. And they love the chief seats in the synagogue and the higher places, the utmost rooms at the feast, as Matthew 23 talks about. They love to be called rabbi. They love to have the titles acclaimed upon them. They love to have people just drool over their accomplishments and their positions or the, their uh, possessions. Um, uh, in Matthew 23, once again, be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and you're all brethren. And call no man your father upon earth, Jesus says in rebuke of all this pride 
that fills even pulpits today. For one is your Father, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called master, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Your servant. The way up is down. It's an amazing thing. It's a reversal thing with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the one who pops themselves to the up and the front is put down to the least and the last. Uh, the one who rushes for this uh, great status is the one who is embarrassed uh, as he is reseated. Who are you trying uh, to impress? Who and how are you putting yourself up? Everyone who exalts themselves will be humble, will be humble. But he who humbles himself will be exalted. Wow, there's the, there's the test. Beware of the pride of the scribes, says Jesus. And today we challenge, beware of the pride in our own heart. That love and long to be looked at, to be acclaimed, to be said we're the the best. What seat do you want? I was thinking about this with the seating of my Honda. With the teenagers, it was always, I want to ride shotgun. Oh. With the children, it's, Daddy, when can I ride in that front seat instead of the back seat? always wondered that is it an age or is it a size is it a weight is it a what what is it when 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 you when you finally graduate to shotgun and you get to sit there it was it was that humble seat of the honda accord that that trent and jason and and probably carl had to deal with today where where are we going to sit you know and and it was a, a rearrangement of seating and i noticed that one who sat shotgun after we went to Wawa and, and came back out, uh, it was like, I want to sit in the back seat to let the other sit in the front seat, that place of honor, but he couldn't get the door open or something. He had too much in his hands. Uh, you know, but where, where is that desire? What, what, is, what is going on in our heart? Only God knows, and the Holy Spirit of God can tell us and teach us today, can't he? And so there's this offering of the humility talk that I hope would, would, would challenge us uh, today to, to, to really think about humility, humility. We better think about it because lastly, I come to this thought here that Jesus uh, reveals this humility key and this humility rearrangement type of scene. We find it in the last verse of our text in Luke, it says in verse 11 there, uh, for whosoever exalteth himself will be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Humble thyself or else. Humble thyself or else. There is the disgrace of last place hinted at by Jesus. There is this humility key that is given by Jesus. Let us focus on it before we finish this message. You see, there is the potential in each of our hearts of self-exaltation. Self-exaltation. It is forsaking the advice even of the text. It is the inaction of the proverb where it says when you come to before a, a, an important person, a king or something like that, uh, to, to don't come in this honored position, but go to the lowliest of position. Proverbs 25, verses 6 and 7, put not forth thyself in the presence of the king and stand in the place of great men for better. For better, Proverbs 25, verse 7, better is it to be said unto thee, come up hither than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. So in, in illustration, then Jesus in this parable uh, brings it to a important 
had in the lesson learned from the parable that self-exaltation is not the path. A humble God exaltation is the only way, is the only way, allowing God to exalt us. He that humbleth himself uh, shall be exalted, but he that walketh in pride, God is able to abase. There's the warning. God who knows the very thoughts and the very intents of our heart. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. A verse that has gripped me recently is the Gospel of John chapter 2 and verse 23 and 24 and 25. That as Jesus was in the Jerusalem and the Passover uh, many believed on his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But the belief of that heart was tested in the oncoming days as he goes before the cross and all forsake him. And, and, and it says in verse 24 of John chapter 2, But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any man should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. I always kind of scratched my head at that and wondered what that was all about. Jesus needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. The, the idea is that, that you could get the best of lawyers to make your case sound and look the best and the most convincing. But the best of lawyers of testifying on my behalf will not cut it. It will not pull the wool over Jesus' eyes. God knows. And Jesus needed not that any should take, for he knew what was in man. And what's in us is a, is a proud heart by birth. What's in us is a fist in the hand of Almighty God heart that says, I will be the captain of my own ship. I will take my hands in my own life. I will not bow and be humble to the cross. Jesus humbled himself to the cross and he gives this key. Humble thyself and you will be exalted. Let God exalt you. Let God reach down and, and be kind of the opposite of the other parable that Jesus told of those that trusted in themselves to be righteous. As the two men went up to the temple to pray, this is Luke chapter 18. And one was a Pharisee and the other was a Republican. No, no, a publican. <laughs> That's different. Okay. And, and the Pharisee prayed, I, lo I love the way this phrase, he prayed thus with himself. He <laughs> Pray to God, but he prayed, prayed with himself. That's a that's a sad indication right there. God, I thank thee that I am not as this other man, extortioner, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Verse 13 of Luke 18. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift so much up even his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For to every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. The key to up is down. Humble acts of service. Letting God exalt you. Jesus says, humble thyself. Really, humble thyself or else. And I didn't give you the or else yet. But clearly from this scripture that we started with, in Luke 14, whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. Humble 
yourself or else. And from the other scripture that Dave begin, began with in reading, it says, let this mind be in you. Speaking of this Christ-like mindedness, who didn't think it's something to grasp after even of his equality with God, one with, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But listen to the next. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, don't think that you've got it all figured out. Don't think that your philosophy or your goodness or your self-righteousness will make it to heaven before a holy God. Humble yourself before a holy God. I don't care if you're an atheist or if you're an agnostic or if you're a good moral person or a man filled with religious pride like the Pharisees were. Uh, humble yourself before the cross. Be humble to the cross. That's what, that's what Jesus was. And he is the one who owns the turf of this humility. And it's what his talk was all about. And it's what the key is all about. Bow before the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and call upon him. As a sinner, uh, beating upon his breast and say, God, be merciful to be a sinner. And that's the way we begin this Christian life. And then, Christian, if you're here today and know Christ as your personal Savior, stay humble. <laughs> stay humble. How do you do that? How do you do that? Oh, pastor, that was a really good sermon on humility. Well, thank you very much, I I kind of agree with you. Um, you just you just lost it, whatever you thought you might have had. Why don't you just just get down low and serve? Jesus said to those who wondered, well, 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 when did we do this to you? When did we clothe you? When did we feed you? When did we visit you? And Jesus said, when you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. How do you, how do you stay humble? How do you even know your heart is humble? When our heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? I, the Lord, search the hearts. I try the rates. God knows our heart. And God wants us to humble ourselves. What would that mean? Humble acts of service, service to the Lord. Theologically, it's to bow before the Lord Jesus Christ to receive him as our personal Lord and Savior, and it's to continue to bow before him and worship the King of Kings and exalt him, and that's what God wants us to do. Practically, it is to stoop to the lowest. It is stooping to the least. It is stooping to the meanest. It is stooping to the, the, the lowliest, the least of these, my brethren, and you've done it unto Christ. It is to, it, I just put down the dirty things. It's the dirty dishes, the dirty diapers. It's the dirty floor. It's the dirty toilet. It, it, it is, Lord, Lord, how can I, how can I follow you in your footprints and, 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 and serve in a humble way that's what God desires from all of us. So let's, let's pray for humble hearts. Let's humble before the cross if you're not saved here today and bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are saved today, let's realize that this thing of pride can, can creep in and like a camel with its nose under the, it can get in and take over. Uh, even, even the most spiritual, even the most God, even the most prominent, and it can ruin 
an entire ministry, and it doesn't become all about Jesus anymore. It becomes about the me, the mind, the I, and how my ministries have been ruined by pride, and even Christian ministry and service is just ruined by pride because people are not careful about this thing and not remembering that Jesus owns the turf on humility. And Jesus gave the talk about humility. Humble thyself. Humble thyself. To pray, Lord, humble me today. We'd like to say, Lord, exalt me today. Lord, make me promise. Lord, Lord, let everybody know how much I know. Lord, humble me today. And help me to humbly serve others today. The way up is down. Humble thyself. And you shall be exalted in due time. Because you either humble yourself or you will be humbled. Every knee shall bow. Bow now. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this journey to the cross, Lord, in our calendar towards the crucifixion and resurrection day of memorial in a couple weeks. Help us journey through it, Lord, with our Savior as he is humbled to the cross. Help us to be like Jesus and humble before the cross ourselves saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And help every Christian, Lord, to stay near the cross, Lord, humbly walking with our God. And we thank you today for your word. Let it pierce deeply into our souls, we pray, as we receive the key to humility. To humble ourselves and realize humbly that, that you are able to humble us in a second. Oh God, humble the proudest of hearts here today. Humble that one in the mirror. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.